Well, today we are kicking off our brand new teaching series for 2021, and we're calling it Moving Forward. I know that so many of us, after coming through a year like we did in 2020, we just feel stuck. And all of the uncertainty and the unpredictability uh, can have that impact on us. And feeling stuck is really not a really good feeling to have. You know, when um, authors get stuck, they call it writer's block. Uh, when an athlete gets stuck, they call it a slump. When the economy gets stuck, they call it stagnation. And you know, when people retire, uh, they, uh, they call it uh, every day is Saturday syndrome. They feel stuck in the retirement. You know, uh, Beck and I went out the other night for sushi and uh, we were doing some grocery shopping and it was snowing like crazy and uh, we were ready to go into uh, a time of fasting and prayer. We kind of started early as a couple, just preparing our hearts. And so I said, hey Beck, what do you, uh, what do you want for your last meal uh, before we go into this season of fasting and prayer? And she said, I want sushi. <laughs> I said, okay, let's go get sushi. And Man, it was really snowing hard. The roads were already covered. It was coming down like, you know, that inch an hour snow kind of snow that sometimes we get. So we drove to our favorite place to get some sushi and, and uh, pick that up. And then we were on our way home. And we were coming up the mountain. And thank God we have four-wheel drive, but a lot of people did it. As we were coming up the mountain, and it was pretty bad out. There was just car after car after car that we passed. And they were just sitting there spinning their wheels in the snow. Have you ever felt like that in life? You ever feel like you're just, you know, spinning your wheels that you can't get to where you you want to go in life, and you just feel stuck? Uh, maybe today you feel stuck. You feel stuck. Uh, maybe this pa pandemic has just paralyzed you, and you feel stuck. Maybe you feel stuck in your home. Maybe you feel stuck in a dead end job. Maybe you feel stuck in a relationship, or maybe you feel stuck in your marriage. Uh, maybe you feel stuck financially. Uh, maybe you feel stuck even in your own mind with consistent negative thoughts. Or, or maybe somehow, perhaps, you feel stuck with some bad habits that you just can't seem to kick. Or you feel stuck in sin that you just can't seem to shake. Uh, something inside of you, you just know, maybe today, you, you feel stuck spiritually. There's a, a sense maybe in your spirit that you know um, where God wants you to go in life uh, and you're just not there and you don't even know how to get from here uh, to there because you feel stuck in life. The fact of the matter is we all get stuck in life. Uh, it's just part of the human condition and we want you to know today we've got good news for you. You are not alone and if you're feeling stuck today I want to encourage you there's nothing wrong with you. You are not crazy. You are completely normal and you're exactly like the people that God uses to do great things in and through. In fact um, if you feel stuck, you're in good company, along with some of the greatest characters of the Bible. I mean, think about it. Moses, he was stuck on the backside of a desert, unaware of God's future for him. Naomi, she was stuck in a foreign uh, country um, after the deaths of her husband and her sons. Um, Elijah, he was stuck in the wilderness, feeling sorry for himself because he was not able to bring revival to Israel like he wanted to. Um, the prophet Ezekiel, uh, he was stranded in Babylon at age 30, frustrated because he wasn't able to do what God wanted him or called him to do. Uh, Peter, he was stuck in shame and guilt on the Saturday before Easter. Um, Thomas, he was stuck in uh, doubt and disbelief. Uh, Paul, he was stuck in Troas, uh, where uh, he was looking at a great door that was opening up before him. Um, even the Apostle John, uh, John, he was in exile in the island of Patmos, and he was lonely and he was uh, feeling uh, so sad because he wasn't able to continue his ministry, uh, or so he thought. So if you feel stuck today, um, you are in good company. Well, Becca and I also have more good news for you. Uh, being stuck in life, uh, it's not God's intention for your life. Uh, look at what the Bible says in uh, Philippians uh, chapter 1, verse 6. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion. He'll move it forward to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Listen, friend, God has a good plan for you 
for your life, uh, for your family, for your kids, uh, for your grandkids, mm -hmm. for your finances, for your future, for your legacy. And, and the good news is that God always finishes what he starts. God never just leaves you hanging, dangling by a thread while you're in the middle. God doesn't want you to be stuck in life. He wants you to be able to move forward uh, in your life, to, to live out uh, the uh, goals and the plans and purposes he has for your life. You know, the same God that hung the stars in the sky, the same God that composed the songs that the birds sing, the same God that orchestrates the cycles of history is the same God that has a plan for your life. And nothing matters to him more than fulfilling that plan yeah, for your life. You know, when you think of the stories that uh, of the great uh, characters that we read about in the Bible that Becca just talked about, uh, God had a unique story for each of their lives. and how each of their story would be interwoven into his one big story. And each of those uh, biblical characters, they, they managed to find a way to get unstuck in life and move forward and accomplish what God had for them. And that's what we want to help you do as we go into 2021. Uh, to get unstuck, to move forward so that you can uh, not just uh, survive, but also thrive as we go into this new year so that you can live the life that God intended for you to live. Jesus said in John 10.10, 10, I have come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. And the Bible says in Romans 12.11 in the message translation, don't burn out, keep yourselves fueled and aflame. Be alert, servants of the Master, cheerfully expectant. Don't quit in hard times. Pray all the harder. You know, if you've been here any length of time and you know what we're all about, the vision of this house is this, uh, to inspire people to live a fully surrendered life for Jesus. See, we're called to surrender our lives to Him. He wants your whole life. He wants all of you. He wants the good, the bad, the ugly, everything in between. He wants your successes, your failures. He wants your good days, your bad days. He wants your strengths. He wants your weaknesses. Jesus said the greatest command in the Bible is this, to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. You see, God wants all of you. He wants every single part of you. And here's what we know. You can't be stuck and surrendered at the same time. It's just impossible. Let me say that again. You can't be stuck and surrendered at the same time. Uh, you can't be paralyzed by fear and then also live by faith at the same time. You can't uh, fan into the flame the gifts that God has given you and uh, be stuck. You can't be serving God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind and be stuck at the same time can't be passionately pursuing the presence of God through prayer and also be stuck at the same time. But the question is, how do you get unstuck? How do you uh, get free of the sandbar and back to sailing in open waters? Well, first, you need to decide what's most important in life. You need to decide what matters most in life. And here's some more good news for you. God has already decided what's most important in life. Uh, Becca just mentioned it earlier. It's in Matthew chapter 23. This guy comes up to Jesus and he basically asks this question. Jesus, what's the most important thing that I can do with my life? And here's what Jesus said. It's in Matthew 23, 36. It says this, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. So listen, if you're feeling stuck or stagnant today, spiritually speaking, uh, you, you've got to ask yourself, is what Jesus said right there, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, is that the best thing that you can do with your life? Is that the best thing that I can do with my life, to love God with all my heart, soul, and mind? You see, the decisions that you make determine the direction you take. The decisions you make determine the direction that you take. And your direction in life uh, determines your destination. It's your direction, not your intentions, not your good intentions, as good as they may be, but it's your decisions that determine your direction and your direction determines your destiny, where you end up in life. But here's something I want you to think about. 
the decisions that you make are only as good as the questions you ask. Let me say that again. The decisions that you make are only as good as the questions you ask. So when you're faced with some big decisions, you've got to make sure that you're asking the right questions. You know, and the better that you become at asking the right questions, the better that you will become at making the right decisions. And you think about this question, what's the most important thing I can do with my life? That's a great question to ask. And, and, and God says, well, it's to serve me with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. So ask yourself, is that the best thing that I can do with my life? Ask yourself, how would that impact my life? Like on a daily basis, um, in a very practical way. Here's what we want you to know today. This year can be your best year ever if it's your best year spiritually. Let me say that one more time. This year can be your best year ever if it's your best year spiritually. And here's why. Because everything is spiritual. How we think is spiritual. You know, the Bible says whatever is right, whatever is true, whatever is excellent, whatever is praiseworthy, we should think on these things. Did you know that what you eat and drink is spiritual? The scripture says that our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit, so we need to take care of our bodies. Uh, your entertainment, uh, choices that you make, those are spiritual. Uh, the Bible says be careful what you look at, be careful what you watch, what you listen to, what you allow into your heart and into your mind. How you treat people, how you love people, it's spiritual. The Bible says that we are to love our neighbor as ourselves. We, we need to have compassion and kindness and forgiveness for others. Um, how we manage our money, um, it's spiritual. Um, the Bible says that it's wise to save money. It's, uh, it says to not be greedy, to be generous uh, with God and with others. Uh, the Bible says that it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Um, the scripture says the world of the generous gets larger and larger. Um, did you know that how you manage your time is spiritual? Uh, the scripture says to be careful how you live, uh, not to be unwise, but to be wise. Make the best use of your time. Uh, what you do with your talents and your abilities, this is spiritual. Um, the Bible said, you know, Jesus said, the Son of Man, he didn't come to be served, but to serve. We're called uh, to use these God-given gifts and talents that we have to serve others. Um, the scripture calls us to do this. We need to be uh, using our gifts and talents to serve um, the people in our home, to serve our schools, to serve our community, to serve our church. The point is, everything is spiritual. And can you imagine what your year would look like if you walk into the year with this perspective, with this point of view, that everything in life, everything that I do is spiritual? And friend, this can be your best year ever mm -hmm. if it is your best year spiritually. You know, so if you feel stuck in your life and um, you feel maybe stagnant and you don't know how to get unstuck, Listen, we are here to help you, and that's what this series, Moving Forward, is all about. We want to help you move forward in your life, in your faith, in your relationships, in your finances. And look at this next uh, verse, uh, because it's really the heart of this entire series, Moving Forward. Look what it says in Job 17, 9. The righteous keep moving forward. Uh, the righteous keep moving forward. Why don't you just say that out loud with me? I know it's Maybe kind of weird, you know, you're just sitting there just looking at your computer screen, but would you go ahead and just say this out loud with me? Here we go, ready? The righteous keep moving forward. Say it one more time. The righteous keep moving forward. What do the righteous do? They keep moving forward. God wants you to keep moving forward in your life, regardless of what 2020 was like. No matter what uh, the future might look like for you right now, keep moving forward forward. There is a way to get unstuck in life. And that's what we're going to talk about over the course of the next few weeks. How do we keep moving forward uh, spiritually? We're talking about that today. Next week, how do we move forward relationally? Uh, then in three weeks, how do we move forward financially? And then we're going to wrap it up and talk about how we move forward even emotionally. So as we close our time together today, we just want to give you some really practical advice on how to move forward spiritually. And here's the point. Don't miss this. Oftentimes, the very thing that we refuse to surrender is the very thing 
that keeps us stuck. I'll say it again. The very thing that we refuse to surrender to God often is the same thing that keeps us stuck in life. You know, if you're feeling stuck or stagnant today uh, in any area of your life, you, know, you're, you might want to start to ask, have I fully surrendered that thing to God? You know, around here we talk about four main things that uh, we surrender, four main areas of our life that we surrender to God as we're pursuing living a fully surrendered life. We talk about surrendering my time, my talents, my treasures, and even my plans. And today, as we wrap up, we want to just talk to you about that first thing. So if you want to get unstuck spiritually, the first thing you can do is say to God and to yourself, I surrender my time. It says in Ephesians 5, 15 through 17, um, look carefully then how you walk. See, this is referring to how you live your life. So you need to live your life not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time. Because the days are evil, therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. See, God's telling us here how to live our life. and It's to make the best use of our time. So how can you spend your time wisely? The first thing that you can do is read your Bible. You know, uh, one way to get unstuck spiritually is spend time in the Word of God. Spending time in the Word of God, it helps you to understand God. It helps you to understand His plans, His purpose for your life and for our world. Um, when you read the Bible, it will feed your soul. You see, uh, reading the scripture is like walking into a dark room and turning on the light. So I want to encourage you, if you're feeling stuck in a dark place, uh, get into the Bible and turn on the light. It says in Psalms 119, 105, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. You see, reading the Bible, it's going to help you see. It's going to give you wisdom. It's going to give you direction. It's going to help you know what is the next step that you need to take in life. And here's the cool thing about the Bible. Um, we don't read the Bible as much as the Bible reads us. See, the Bible reads us as we read it because we don't read it alone. You see, when you're reading scripture, the Holy Spirit, he's right there with you. And he's speaking to you about how to apply what you're reading to your life. Um, and this is going to help you develop uh, the character and the values of God in your life. And that alone is going to have uh, a huge impact on your life more than anything else. And uh, we want to give you a powerful tool um, that's going to help you as you read the Bible and learning how to apply it to your life, how to understand it. And this tool is just to keep a spiritual journal. And around here, we call that spiritual journal a SOAP journal. See, SOAP, it stands for uh, Scripture, Observation, Application, and Prayer. SOAP. So to sim simply SOAP uh, is just to uh, open up your Bible and uh, grab a verse, uh, a scripture, uh, read that scripture, read that verse, and write that down in your soap journal. And then observe what is going on in that verse, what's happening here, and then write that observation down. And then take a moment and pray and ask the Holy Spirit to help you to learn how can I apply this verse to my life today and in my daily life. And then um, write your prayer down for the day. And if you do this every single day, you will get unstuck spiritually. That's so good, Becca. Here's a second way to surrender your time. It's to pray daily. Now, listen to what Jesus said about prayer in Luke 11, 9. And I tell you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Here's the deal, friend. Prayer changes things. It not only connects my soul to the, to the heart of God, but it also uh, it opens up doors uh, for my life. It helps me move forward. You know, it said, ask, it will be given. Seek, you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened. Look, if you're feeling stuck today, commit to pray daily, to get into God's presence, to shut yourself in and get alone and begin to seek the face of God through prayer. And you will be amazed at what God will do on your behalf as he will go before you and he will open doors uh, that you never dreamed possible. He'll put you in places and in meetings and in places of influence uh, that would blow your mind because prayer makes things happen. That's why the Bible says the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. 
And that's why we have invited those in our church that are pursuing living a fully surrendered life for Jesus, this side of heaven, uh, to spend a, a season of prayer and fasting with us and reading our Bible every day uh, between now and the end of the month. Uh, Maybe you didn't receive that invitation, and it might be because you have not yet uh, joined a group or stepped into uh, serving here and joined a serve team. But listen, we welcome you. We want you to uh, and join us in this 21 days of prayer and fasting. Uh, if you'll just go right now uh, to the digital connection card that's being posted on whatever platform um, that you're uh, watching on, uh, you can fill that card out and say, hey, I want to be part of the 21 days of prayer and fasting, and we're going to send you information uh, on how to uh, join us. We're going to be uh, reading scripture every day uh, uh, through a U version, uh, uh, 21 days of prayer and fasting called Forward, uh, written by some friends of ours that pastor an amazing church, actually in Singapore, uh, the pastor uh, Seward and his family there. So uh, it's going to be a great time of prayer and fasting, and we're going to see God open doors, and there's going to be breakthrough uh, in your life and in the life of our church. I believe God is going to do miracles as we pray and as we seek Him, not only for us and for our church, but I'm believing that even the season that we're in, that is the church of Jesus Christ around our nation, is in this uh, time of committed uh, prayer and fasting. God is going to do miracles uh, in our country as well. Amen. So good, Dave. Another way that you can get unstuck spiritually is to choose community and grow in your faith with a group of friends. Yeah. And you can do this, uh, just join a group. Uh, listen, we are not created to do life alone. We are created for community. It says in Galatians 6 2, carry each other's burdens, and in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. You see, being connected in community, it is an important part of your spiritual growth. You cannot live for Jesus and follow the ways of Jesus in isolation. If we learn anything in 2020, it is that community is stronger than isolation. We need each other. Um, you know, the people uh, we are closest to and that we surround ourselves with in life will determine where we end up in life. Last week, our friend Andy Andrew, uh, she was with us. Powerful so message, good. right? Um, she spoke about on a subject of walk, stand, and sit. And if you missed that, uh, I want to encourage you, just go onto our website, mycommunity.church, and you can watch that back on demand. It's going to really encourage you. But it was based on Psalm 1, and she asked three important questions. Who are you walking with in life, and where are you going? Who are you standing with in life, and what are you standing for? And who are you sitting with in life? And what are you talking about? We need to choose community over isolation. You know, if you're in a group, I want to thank you. Thank you for being faithful. Thank you for being there for each other, encouraging each other, praying for each other. And you know firsthand how important community is, what a difference it makes in your spiritual life. But if you're not in a group, can I just ask you, what are you waiting for? Today is your day. This is the time. Just go uh, right now. The hosts are posting in the chat the digital connection card. Would you fill that out and say, yes, I want to join a group today. I don't want to live in isolation anymore. I'm going to be in community and grow in my faith with others. Maybe God is speaking to you about leading a group. Maybe he's been talking to you about this for a while. And I want to encourage you, take that step and let us know that you would like to lead a group. And we'll get you all the resources, all the material that you need so you can successfully lead your group. And in fact, uh, we've written and filmed a group curriculum that you can only get if you join a group. So let me encourage you, choose community today and get unstuck. Yeah, let's get unstuck. Come on, let's go. Join a group, lead a group. You can do this. We will set you up for success. It's going to be a difference maker in your life. I know these things that we're talking about today, they might seem simple. It might feel a little bit of, um, I don't know, uh, just like too easy. But listen, these, these small things that we do are things that we can control. Listen, we can't control mm -hmm. what's going on in you know, Congress, we can't control what's going on in the economy. We can't control maybe even what's going on at work. But we can control uh, the choices that we make, you know, to, um, uh, to step into community, uh, to, to read God's Word on a daily basis, uh, to spend time in prayer, 
And when we commit to doing these even small things, you have no idea what the small single step of obedience to God and His Word, what kind of impact that will make for your future and the doors that God uh, will open on your behalf. And here's the last uh, way that we can help you get unstuck spiritually. And it's this, attend church weekly. Attend church weekly. Look at this last scripture from the message paraphrase. I love how um, the writer of Hebrews puts it this way. Hebrews 10, uh, 22 through 25. So let's do it. Full of belief. Confident. That we're presentable inside and out. Let's keep a firm grip on the promises that keep us going. Help us move forward. He always keeps his word. Let's see how inventive we can be in encouraging love and helping out. Not avoiding worshiping together, as some do, but spurring each other on, especially as we see the big day approaching. Man, I just love this. I love the way that it's translated here. Uh, let's see how inventive we can become in helping out and not avoiding worshiping together, as some are doing. Listen, guys, I know it's been a really difficult uh, you know, year. You know, this started on March 13th of, of, of last year, and, you know, it's just been wild and crazy. Our whole lives have been turned upside down and inside out. And I know for so many of us, it's impacted us spiritually. Uh, many of us, when this uh, lockdown started, we were attending church uh, weekly, staying so connected. But as time has gone by, we know that so many have just began uh, to, um, to fall away and to uh, kind of check out. And instead of getting up on a Sunday and watching live, you know, I'll watch it back later during the week on demand. And then it goes from, you know, that to, oh, I didn't have time. I'll catch up. I'll, I'll watch two back to back. I'm going to binge community church like I binge, you know, Netflix or something. And then what just happens, we get out of step spiritually and then we just lose focus. And then before we know it, one day we wake up and it's been forever since we've been to our community group or it's been forever since we were in church and, and that just happens. And you know, if that's the case that you've been uh, in or maybe you know some friends, can, can we just as a church take some personal responsibility, not just for ourselves, but to also to one another? I mean, it says here in, in Hebrews that we should be uh, inventive in ways of how we're uh, you know, helping out, serving, and uh, worshiping together, staying connected in community. So let me just encourage not only you, uh, because you know, you're here, you're watching, <laughs> you're online, um, but also uh, find some inventive ways to invite your friends. Maybe there's some people that you haven't talked to in a while, haven't been to your group in a while. Call them up, ask them, how you doing? Hey, I was thinking about you, are you okay? You know, maybe somebody you haven't seen uh, even on you know, the broadcast in a while. Call them up. Let them know you were thinking about them. Reach out to them. Let's be inventive. Let's be encouraging to one another. Let's spur one another on to, to good works, the Bible says. You know, we say around here all the time that success, it starts on Sunday. Sunday is the first day of the week. And there's a reason, I, I believe, that uh, you know, uh, when we worship together on Sunday... Uh, and we're not legalistic about this. I mean, we've had Saturday services, you know, uh, in our past as well. And who knows, we may do that again. But Sunday is the first day of the week. And, and here's a principle from God's Word. That whenever you give the first of to God, it releases His power to bless the rest. So when you give the first part of your week to God, it releases His power to bless the rest of your week. Wouldn't you like God's blessing over the rest of your week? Well, then success starts Sunday. Give that first part of your week to God. When you wake up every day, give that first part of the day to God. He'll bless the rest of your day. Hey, when you are, are you know, receive your paycheck, when you give that first part of that income that God's blessed you with to God, you get the first part. It releases His power to bless the rest of your wealth. Listen, I know some of you might be saying, well, I just don't have time for all of this. I mean, you want me to read my Bible every day? Uh, you want me to pray every day? You know, God wants me to, you know, be in a group uh, that meets every other week for like an hour or two. And then you want me to attend church, you know, uh, uh, for an hour every Sunday. I just don't have time. I don't have enough time. Well, hey, I get it. I understand what you're saying. But I would just push back a little bit and challenge you to think about it this way. 
we all get the same amount of time. Nobody gets a 25 hour you know, day. We all get a 24 hour day. I don't think what you need is more time. I think what you need is more focus. It's to focus your time to make the best use of your time. In fact, that's why uh, we wrote in this first, uh, the content we created for the first week of our small group series moving forward that kicks off this week. We wrote um, some great content about how to sharpen your focus as we move into 2021. And I believe it has the power to really help you gain focus in your life. And this year can be the most focused year ever. You know, some of you are listening and God's speaking to your heart right now, and He's telling you what your next step is. And for some of you, your step is the first step that you need to take, and that is to surrender your life to God. You know, there is no better way to get unstuck in life than to surrender your life to God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You know, He lived a perfect life. He died on the cross, and then he rose again. He conquered death and sin for you and for me. And I want to encourage you, if you have not yet surrendered your life to Jesus, today is the day to do that. That is the way to get unstuck in life. Or maybe uh, you need to re-surrender your life. You've been holding on tight to some things in your life, and you're feeling really stuck because of it. And today it's time to re-surrender those things to God and give them to him so that he can move in and through your life. So I want to encourage you, if you have not yet surrendered or you need to surrender again, do that right now. And Dave's going to pray for you, and he's going to pray for us. Dave, will you pray Let's right now? Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for uh, this time in your word. And we thank you that um, we sense your presence right here in whatever space we're in. Maybe it's, you know, in our home, at a kitchen table somewhere, or sitting in our lazy boy watching us on the TV or driving in our car at work in the break room or sitting in our truck. God, and, uh, I, I know you're speaking to the hearts of people today. And we, we honestly want this to be our best year ever. And we know it can be our best year ever if it's our best year spiritually. So help us to get unstuck. Help us to move forward. Help us to live lives of full surrender. Uh, surrendering our time, our talents, our treasures, even our plans to you. We lay it all down, Lord. We recognize today that our life does not belong to ourselves. It's been bought with the price, the precious blood of Jesus Christ, and help us to live our lives as wise, not as unwise, to make the best use of our time. And I pray, God, for those that, that need to surrender their time, uh, to, to commit today uh, to prayer and to reading the Bible, to being in community, and to joining a group, and, um, and to uh, decluttering their life so that they can have focused time in, in, in surrendering their time uh, to you today. I would just pray for those that right now they know in their heart of hearts that there's things that are just not right between them and in between you. And, and even if that's you today as you're, as you're uh, praying with me, if you want to surrender your heart, your life to Jesus Christ, you can pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I surrender my life to you. I give you my life. I ask you to come in to my heart. Forgive me of pushing you out. Forgive me of the mistakes, the sins of my past. And help me to move forward in my life. I want to live for you. So I surrender my life to you today. It's in your name that I pray. Amen. 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 Well, if you just prayed that prayer with Dave and you made the decision to fully surrender your life to Jesus, I just want to say we are so proud of you. Yes. You made the best decision of your entire life. And so well done. And listen, if you just prayed that prayer, will you uh, fill out the digital connection card that the hosts are putting in the chat right there? Let us know that you prayed that prayer and we'll be able to help you take your next spiritual steps and grow in your faith. So we're looking forward to connecting with you and, and helping you take those next steps. Well, listen, next uh, Sunday, we will continue uh, in our series, Moving Forward. We're going to talk about how do we move forward relationally. If there's been any relational conflict or strife, uh, we certainly haven't had any of that no, in our house. Never. Through quarantine <laughs> and COVID. Um, but if you have, uh, of course, we're speaking uh, yeah. sarcastically. My nose is there. growing. <laughs> yes. Um, but Beck and I are going to share some of the lessons we've learned about how we can move forward, even relationally. It's not just a marriage talk, it's about all of our relationships and what we can do to move forward and relationally get healthy, build great uh, relationships with one another. So come on back 
uh, next Sunday uh, for part two. Until then, uh, we want you to know we love you. Yes, we love you so much. And also, as we talked about joining our group, today we're starting a, a new group curriculum called Moving Forward, um, along with this messy series that we're doing. You do not want to miss this. Um, Pastor Dave, he's got an incredible uh, message to share with you guys within your community group. It's going to be an amazing opportunity to grow together. So make sure you're filling out that digital connection card, letting us know you want to get into a group or lead a group, and uh, you can be a part of the Moving Forward uh, uh, community group over these next few weeks. Um, and we just love you guys. We thank you so much for joining us today, and we'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Love you. Love you. <laughs>